flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are extra agendas on the table to my right, if anyone needs an agenda. Um, the next item is approval of minutes from the financial meeting of November 6, 2013. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ryan. Which, one, which meeting was this? November 6. It was the meeting right after the election, I believe. Okay. Go ahead. Motion made by Fred. I'll make it Fred. Yeah. Yep. Seconded by Ryan. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Any no's? Motion passes. The next was the special meeting of November 19th, 2013, and this was our organizational meeting. And, uh, I think if we got from our votes here, or Carl and Wait a minute. Who was not there? There was one meeting, there was only five members. That was right. 19th, I think. Yeah. I believe the 19th was the <coughs> meeting when we had the organization. Okay. And on the 6th, I wasn't there. It's okay. So, do you need a motion? Yes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any changes, errors, or omissions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, I am going to be removing one item from the agenda tonight because there's additional information that I need to get before I bring you the agreement, which is number eight, agreement between CRS property and the town of Portland. So that will likely be next time. Um, I can't, I'm not prepared for tonight. With that um, one change, is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, we have um, our state senator here tonight, Art Linares, and we have our state representative, Christy Carpino, here. And I know that they have other um, appointments tonight, so I'd, I had asked Christy first to say a few words about um, some of the work that we've been um, having, working together on. So if you'd like to uh, speak, Christy, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for um, coming. First, I just want to publicly thank everybody in Portland. We've done, a, a, I think, a great job of working together. These accidents have been horrific, and my understanding is some of the worst that our first responders have seen. So, Lieutenant, to the entire department, um, and I've spoken to Chief Shea about each and every one of these accidents, and, and I thank you for your professionalism. I know these were tough, and you all go home to your family. So a very public thank you to, to both departments. Susan, I, and I want to thank you as well. Susan and I have worked on this project, this unfortunate project thus far, and we've made a number of milestones already. Um, I've reached out to DOT in writing, uh, Susan and I have, and I've drafted them a letter and already sent it out, and I've asked them for a detailed review of the section of 66 that runs through Portland. I politely suggested to some of the other neighboring towns that as this problem may be originating in some of their communities that they suspect um, and request the same, but I've asked them to do a careful review of 66 to see if we need additional signing or lighting to help cut down on some of these tragedies. I've also reached out to the utilities to find out what the process is for lighting. It's a detailed and lengthy process, as you might imagine, but it's one that we can um, originate if traffic enforcement and the police department and yourself believe it's appropriate. Prices will be determined on location uh, and amount of work that need to be, but I'm happy to work with you on that. I've also asked DOT to provide uh, the best member of their department to meet with the local and state officials in these communities so that they could present some options to us as to what's best available. I'd ask the department, you're the resident experts, so that for you guys to be involved, as I know you have been thus far, so that collectively we could come together with the best plan. I've also asked that they help send the individual who could potentially identify any grant opportunities that may be out there. I know we're waiting for the Police reports, my understanding is speed may have been a factor, and if enforcement is one of the options, I've specifically asked them to help identify any grant opportunities going forward to perhaps um, 
help put additional officers on the road and, and increase staffing. And as soon as we get some of those numbers, I'm happy to share them with you. Um, I know that state police has reached out to you, and thank you both for talking to them, knowing, again, that some of this runs outside of your jurisdiction and some of these problems may fall under them. So if they can offer any resources they've offered um, to do that. And generally, if I'm, I'm here if you need anything. I mean, if there are grant opportunities, I'm happy to help. And I know Senator Lenar is here that we're happy to help walk you through the process, letters of support, any meetings that you need us here for. And I just wanted to ask if there's anything else you need from me um, at that juncture, please ask. This is a safety, uh, this is a safety problem for for anybody coming through Portland, not only as a Portland residents, it's people traveling through Portland, and I want to make sure that collectively do we do everything that we can. So I'm I'm here for the asking. I don't know if Susan and I have had these. We've we've talked we've board. talked almost daily, if not multiple times on some days. But really, this for the edification of the rest of the board. If if any of you have any questions or suggestions, I'm happy to take them. You know, thanks okay. for your help, Christy. We appreciate it. Um, in the conversations with, with DOT, is the speed limit on 66, was there any discussion about looking at that also on portions of that to reduce it? We've asked them for a complete review. We haven't broken it down into anything in particular, simply hoping that we can examine everything that might be feasible so that we can look at it from different options, whether it's lighting, speed, signage, uh, additional enforcement, et cetera. And the other thought I had was, was the, I think it's the, uh, National Highway and Traffic uh, Federal Federal Authority does give grants for highway safety. Um, you familiar with that at all? That may be something to look at. I know Bristol got uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars for uh, recently, and it's the second or the second or third time they've got received that grant. Um, so that might be something we human we can look at. For Sure, and maybe we can contact our federal representatives as well and bring them on. Um, the more uh, folks around the table will probably be the best chance for success. All right, thank you thank very you. much. We'll continue to work If together. I don't see you, happy holidays. Thank you, Representative. Thank you for coming. Have a good night. Senator Linares, did you want to say anything at this uh, point? You know, I don't want to repeat what Christy says. Mm -hmm. You know, we're working all together on these same initiatives. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I do have a few other communications that I wanted to make the board aware of. Um, good news, we received a letter um, saying that we were successful with the library construction grant, which you may remember you approved us to apply for. It's $20,000. Um, and it will be to make improvements, particularly to the lavatories, um, to make them handicapped accessible. There is local money that will be spent on this project, as well as the $20,000 grant from the library, um, state library. So we're very pleased, and I want to thank Janet Nocheck for initiating that, and um, the other staff that helped us put that application together. We've applied in the past, and we haven't been successful, and this time we were, so congratulations. We also received word, and we're going to be talking about this a little bit later in the meeting, um, a $25,752 um, grant from the, the Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection from the state of Connecticut, and this is specifically for school security. Um, the town is matching that with $21,994 that's already been expended. Um, so we'll be talking a little bit about that in terms of going forward and how we can put this money aside to do additional improvements as they become necessary. Um, the third uh, initiative is also good news. Um, Kathy Richards and Senator Linares today uh, uh, accepted a $5,000 award from Energize Connecticut, which is a Bright Idea grant through the Clean Energy Communities Program, and we're very pleased to receive that. I don't know if Kathy or Senator Linares wanted to say a few words about that. Um, I'll just say what Portland, each, there were 35 towns that received a grant um, between five and $15,000, and for Portland, the reason we received it was um, 
700 homes, which is 18% of the homes in the community, participated in the residential program. Um, I'm not sure if that is still available. We'll have to check into that. But that's where they come into the house for yep, $75, is yeah. and they show you where the air might be leaking out of your house. They give you energy um, light bulbs, and uh, it's really it's a very good program. Um, all 119 Portland Housing Authority units have participated in energy saving programs, which we worked with them on that. Uh, Portland was the first pilot community for energy efficiency awareness, and I think that credit goes to Andy Bauer and his group. Uh, and 34 business and municipal energy saving projects have been completed. So mm -hmm. that was pretty good for a small town. Uh, we did great. It's wonderful. Thank you for attending. Yeah, and thank you, Senator, for attending too. I've got a nice picture of you both. <laughs> it's very nice. Carl had tried to go, but he had another commitment. I know he was also thinking about going, but he wasn't able to come. So thank you. Oh, and we also received word um, that the Portland Panthers um, they finished their season undefeated, and they are going to be going to the national championship in Richmond, Virginia, and I want to say big congratulations to them for their outstanding achievements on the field and also to their coaches for such a good job as well as all of the parents. Um, there's a nice article here that I'll pass. And maybe later in the meeting, under general discussion, we can discuss um, maybe helping them out a little bit. OK, that's all I had under correspondence at this point. Um, from my files, we also have some residents from Tryon Street here tonight. And I'd asked them to come because last summer I had visited Tryon Street. Um, there are some concerns about the street, and some of the concerns are um, you have to go through Glastonbury to actually get to this street in Portland. And for the residents that live there, they have some concerns, multiple concerns, I would say, in terms of services that the town provides, as well as um, school, as well as um, just the logistics of reaching that. And I thought maybe I'd open it up. I don't know if uh, Jody would like to say a few words. Not much That's, okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's just, just your friends and neighbors. <laughs> but if you go to the microphone, Jody, we'll be able to have you on record. Okay, everybody. Is not a requirement. <laughs> I can speak to plenty of strangers, but to a whole room is a little different. I'm Jody Smaglis, and I bought a home at the end of Tryon Street about two and a half years ago. And we, we love where we are, but it's been very trying. Um, we don't get the town paper, and, and that is, is a big concern. We're not notified about any of the public happenings, what's going on in town. I've tried repeatedly to get the paper, I've contacted the bulletin. Is it called? River East. The River East, sorry. Well, I've contacted them. Uh -huh. They said there's no way they can send it to us. Um, we have to be Portland residents. I tell them we are Portland residents, but they say, but you're South Glastonbury. And I say, well, yes, but we pay our taxes to Portland. And so here we go. Um, I found out that it can be mailed to us for $100 for each household per year. And um, I don't think that's really right either. I don't know if, if you as the board can get around that. But the fact that we're not being notified of what's happening is, is not fair to us. We, we need to know what's going on. Uh, the other concerns were mosquitoes on the street. West Nile virus was found. We weren't notified. We have families. There's elderly. There's, there's children on the street. And nobody notified us. And it was found on Tryon Street. Um, the snow, the road being narrow, leave pickup. We don't know if we're offered that. Other residents in town are uh, mowing. My fiance mowed the whole street. We don't see any trucks down there. The trees. Uh, the list goes on. And I'm not here to complain. I'm just here to, because we're concerned about how we're being treated. We pay our taxes, but we don't hear from anybody. Susan was very kind to come out and walk the street with us, and we were very appreciative. She listened to all our concerns. Uh, I asked her for a street light at the end of the road because I was concerned about the hunters partying at night. I have hunters all the, you know, through hunting season. They're drinking in the road. And Susan was very kind to get me a street lamp at the bottom of my road, and that was really, we were really appreciative of that. 
Um, I think that's really cut. the flooding in the road is very concerning. Yes. That's Glastonbury's property and the fact that they don't care that we're flooded out every spring and we have no way to leave our homes is very concerning and I think that there's a simple fix for it. There's got to be a way. My daughter is now going to Valley View School. I'm very, very pleased with the school system and I'm really trying to embrace this town. But, you know, I need to, to know what's going on in town. And the fact that the school, I, there's going to come a time where she can't get to school because that road's flooded. So that's mm -hmm. something I think maybe Portland could talk to Glastonbury. Kind of dips it dips, and, and I think it fills. could be, mm -hmm. there, there's something that can be done. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it, it's ignored when there's residents down there is a little concerning. We don't have a way out like on 17 where the road turns. We don't have a way out. There's no other way. We're, we're at, the, at a dead end. So we'd like to see if there's something we can do to rectify that. I have been in communication with the town manager in Glastonbury. And um, initially, Jody was, was and I were talking about, is there a way that maybe this street should be really part of Glastonbury? Right. Um, I think that's a very complicated process. Right. And the town manager agrees with me on that. Uh, there was also discussion as to getting your youngster to school. Right. Um, and we asked if perhaps she could go to the Glastonbury school, but she cannot. She's not a resident of Glastonbury. She right. doesn't live in Glastonbury. Just because it, we drive by it. Yeah. And what they offered for a bus route was a little appalling. They asked me to bring my five-year-old to um, Nayog School at 715 to be picked up by a van to go to another element, um, elementary school. And I, and I talked to Chris Phelps, and I talked to uh, Sally Doyen, and nobody had any, any resolution. I drive her. The fact to put a five-year-old on a van at 7.15 in the morning over you know, a mile away from my house at another elementary school is wrong. I know the town is big. I, I understand that. I understand that, that there's, it's hard to bus all the kids to school because the town is very rural. There's a lot of rural areas. Um, and, I, and you know what? I'm fine with driving her. She's safe. I know I see her to the front door. She's safe. I, I take her home. Um, I, we have bigger concerns. The mosquitoes, the West Nile virus, the road flooding. We're trapped. We don't get notified. Nobody tells us if the river's going to be a threat. We watch. We see. I mean, it's coming up to our, our doors. But is there any emergency contact system that the Portland, I, I'm on the Glastonbury one. Does Portland have an emergency phone system for? Yes, yes. We okay. use um, the dispatch center in Middletown. Okay. But because you have a unique situation, you would be the only residents that would be affected by that particular flooding. Right. And from what I saw, um, and and I think others that have been on Tryon Street, that is pretty low there. I don't know how often that floods, but it floods, I think, more often than other areas. Yes. Um, but. It is something that I, I spoke with another resident today, um, Michelle I spoke with, are you her husband? And um, said that I am going to be speaking with our emergency management director. Certainly the police and the fire department are aware of the situation, but in terms of getting a better monitoring and notification system, we'll need to contact you directly right. about that. And right. I need to check with dispatch um, because you don't have I don't believe you have a, do you have a Portland number? Because I call your cell number, so is it a No, Portland I know you call number? my cell, no, everything's Glastonbury. My yeah. driver's license is Glastonbury. Yeah. Their address e is South Everything Glastonbury. we do is Glastonbury. Yes. I, I, you know, if I bring my daughter to here to, to get a library card, I'm, af I'm afraid they might give me a hard time. <laughs> That's, everything is South Glastonbury. Everything we do, it's just the way it is. It, the mailing address is Tryon Street. South Glastonbury. Our mail is delivered by South Glastonbury um, Postal. Hmm. The snow is plowed by Glastonbury. by Glastonbury. Really? Yes. They've been very kind. They have been, us. and we're a pre, you know. He's got the plow yeah, the plow guy, and and he's wow. and and they're actually <laughs> on it. We're not like the, the you know. I I think part of it too is they gotta have a they have a place to push it, mm -hmm. you know, when they're going down Trying Street from from actual Glastonbury to, to our area. But everything that we do is, is Glastonbury. Everything. And so it's even because you have Middlesex and Hartford County. So whenever you go to get your license, you fill it everything. We have a hard time. And everything and we do. Everything. Right. For example, like this in our town. 
two weeks after Valley View School started, and again, I'm very happy with the school. I'm room mom. I've helped at the Halloween Carnival. I'm, I'm embracing this town as much as I can for my daughter. I, I want her to have a wonderful experience. Um, but I got a call from the school nurse, and she said, you can't come to school here. Oh, wow. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, Juliana, did you just move? And I said, no, I didn't just move. And she said, you live in South Glastonbury. I said, well, technically, I live in Portland. She goes, no, no, you can't go to school here. And I had to. <laughs> I mean, this is just one example. This is one example. We are in a unique situation. You know, we pay our taxes, and, it, and we're feeling a little, we, we have some things that we need addressed. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we are a Portland street. You know, we are. So. So we're hoping. Does Stephen have some questions? Or? Maybe I can ask a stupid question. Why, why is it South? Why? Why when you get your license is it South Glastonbury? Why? Why? Why is that? Why? Yeah, it doesn't Be make any sense. Mailing because address. our mailing address is South Glastonbury. Why? Because that is the only, that's the arrangement that was arranged between Portland and Glastonbury, I guess. The post office. The post offices. Right. And so our, our post office is South Glastonbury. We didn't, but, we but didn't it make it. You, but I don't understand why it says you live in South Glastonbury if in reality you live in Portland. <laughs> that's what the point is. We, we pay. Sure. But you're that, saying that, that your license says you live in South Glastonbury, right? My right. license says South Glastonbury well, because that has to, every, uh, all the mailings I do, have to, it has to match up. It's the only, you can't do one and the been other. Forever, like? when it's when been bought, forever. When you bought the house, what was the house listed? Portland. It was, and yet everything. I knew I was buying a house in Portland. It wasn't like there was a big, you know, I mean, we, it, but this is the way it is. Comcast is the cable company here, correct? Yeah. We have Cox. <laughs> we, there's no lines, there's no, no lines coming in from Portland. Yeah. So we I have see. to use Glastonbury services. I think maybe, and I was saying this to Michelle, and I, I'm not, I'm not a hundred years old, but, and I, <laughs> but I think that the Tryon Street, maybe in the old days, they thought it was going to go down and match up to 17A. I think it did. It used to. And nobody lived there. Yes, they did. Well, they did. And the bridge got washed out, yeah. and then the people couldn't get there. So the get water the came. It went right through the fairgrounds okay. and out here. That's the way it was. Okay. We got through the old time. Okay. Hmm. And it was all, that was back in the 50s. Now, I don't know that it's really ever been abandoned. I'd have to take a look at that. Because well, obviously the, the streets still out, exist. They didn't, people can't, they're still paying tax on a lot of properties down there, and they can't even get to them. It's not that they're, I don't think, I've never heard of them. And they're, they're in the floodplain, plain, correct? Right. That whole area. Right. How many houses on this? What's it? Eight? eight? Yeah, eight. I think it's about eight of us. And there's what, one? There's elderly, club. again, there's children. Jay's so son is four, my daughter's five. Or just so if you called, like say you had an emergency, who would the local responders be? Would it be Portland Police? <laughs> these, these, these gentlemen know me. I've had a call a yeah, few times on, on hunters, crazy hunters. And, I mean, guys walking down at the bottom of my street with gun, shotguns and, and drinking beers it makes me uncomfortable. I, I feel like my daughter can't play outside and be safe. It, it's yeah. really scary and it's not monitored. So it's not monitored. Who, whoever's on, they know me. I've I've had a call. If you, I you know, I, I have a family, and and to watch these these some of these guys are really respectful, and some of them are are coming so in from you, I don't know did where. You, did you call the dispatch center, the three four seven two five four one, or did you think. call? I have the number. I don't know. They no, I never call nine one one. No, I have the number programmed in my phone, and okay. they actually said to start calling DEP as well. Yes. Yeah. But I'm just wondering in terms of a nine one one call, where that would get dispatched to. Do you know, Ron? It would probably come in through Glastonbury and then transfer it over to Port Maybe. Time. I don't I had the number saved in my cell phone. But so. you can, she can dial the actual dispatch center. Right. But if right. she dialed 911, it would go through, through Glastonbury. Right. That's fire and police. Yes, yeah, fire and police. And most likely Portland, I can't speak for the fire department because I'm not the chief of the fire department, but I would think like they do with the city of Middletown. They probably have a mutual aid agreement with Glastonbury to be their first responder should there be a house fire there because we are so far away right. before we could get up to your, because you got to come in for class of area down old maids come yes. in. And I would think most likely if a fire came in there, I 
think it would be a dual tone mm -hmm. for also Glastonbury. Well, it's kind of interesting because Glastonbury practices in Portland for right. their fire with the boat rescue. Yeah. So it is a weird place. Yeah. <laughs> so the paper, do you get the Glastonbury citizen then? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes it comes, sometimes. And don't they have free copies of the post office? The Portland Post Office. Yeah. The Portland Post Office. Yeah. And I think that, that the library does too. There's got to, I think that there has to be a way for us to be notified. I mean, we have, there's you know, there. all the other residents are being notified of there's what's public, happening, the, the meetings, what's going on. I did speak with the publisher, and he said the same thing to me that he said to Jody, and that is the post office only delivers to the addresses that are Portland. So do we change our address to Portland? But I don't know that you'll get your mail. I mean, if you want to get your mail, I think you'd give, you'd, you'd use the address they give you. I've learned, you know, the post office has a lot of rules. Right. You know what I would right. say? Yes, Scott? Mail out a letter that with Portland, yeah. No, it doesn't. I, it doesn't. Right. No, yeah. Christmas yeah. cards. Yeah. They all get sent. And I have friends that call me and say, hey, I thought you lived in Portland. I said, well, I do. But you have to mail it to South Glastonbury. They refuse to route it, even though they know. They no, do not. Bills, yeah, well, that would be really nice, I, I you know, yeah, as I get foreclosed way. on. Um, yeah, so so those are our concerns. And, and, and again, we, we like to embrace our town and feel part of our town. and see if we can resolve some of these issues you know again I I know in the spring I, I'm I not gonna be able to bring my daughter to school yeah, and and that's that. a problem I gotta you know she's gonna be absent from school because I can't get get down the road that doesn't work I mean and it's Glastonbury's property it's not our road it's not the town of Portland section of the it's, road that's right it's Glastonbury's property but they can't, they have to recognize that the people are getting trapped. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, we deal with the bulky waste dump right there. We can't use it because. Can we do anything about that road that used to be there? But creating that road? Well, no. I don't know the area. It's well, really, right? really oh, it's terrible. wet. Yeah. And the yeah, road it's is wet. bumpy it's and, yeah, it right the and it yeah, floods. And it floods. Yeah, when we the year I bought the house, the, the river came up and surrounded the house like Gilligan's Island. <laughs> I cried. I said, "What have we done?" <laughs> I mean, it was really bad. I evacuated by jet ski with my daughter. I, I it, it was bad. It was very bad. But I and I know that's part of living on the river. You're going to experience. But it was pretty extreme the year that we bought the house. It was yeah. pretty extreme. So that's it. We, thank you for for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all tonight. I hope that we can make some positive changes for us residents on Tryon Street. Some of them couldn't be here tonight, but they asked me to speak speak for them. We all have been in contact by email, and again, Susan's been, been in contact with us and walked the street with us and got mm -hmm. to see firsthand. And if the other selectmen want to go out sometime, we'll Yeah, walk. please, please, yeah. we'll it's come out. It's a lovely area. You it, live in a beautiful street. Yeah, yeah you can go on it. Friday and deliver the paper. What's that? Yeah, you can deliver That's the paper right. for me. That would be wonderful. I won't come, well, there's none now. There's there's no, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So. Did anyone else want to say anything in, in addition to what's been said? I think, I think Jody did a good job. Yeah. How often does your road flood? Seems like it's this. At least once. Yeah, at least once, sometimes For twice. How long? Yeah. How long? Sometimes a week. Yeah. Similar to stuff. Because the big concern with the flood and the plowing is emergency vehicles again. We're back to emergency vehicles. And so who does that, you know, God forbid, God forbid, something happen. Who, no, who's going to help us? Yeah. It, it, I mean, no, I really feel strong. We, I, I, we'll, we, we'll we're families. We'll come up with a plan for that. I'll contact Noel Garrett, who's the emergency management coordinator, and Bob Shea, our fire chief, and Lieutenant Millardo, and we'll work out a plan um, and a notification system so that you know as soon as we would know in terms of flooding. Um, Usually, you know, I know that you're all very savvy and capable, well, but yeah, I think well, it's maybe. important that you be notified by our us so mm -hmm. that we know how you're doing and what your needs might be. Thank you, Senator Lamont. And it's not even a matter of, we're not talking about our properties flooding, like no. on 17 in some areas. It's that part of the road. It's something that can be fixed. 
you know, our properties are all lifted up. It's not the problem. But if we can't get get out and if there's an emergency or get food, I mean, most people can't just pick up and leave their house for a week. I have animals. I have, uh, you know, I mean, you can't just leave. Huh? Is there something possibly the feds could do on this with the Army Corps of Engineers because of the encroacher channel and so forth? Well, um, there, there are um, hazard mitigation monies um, in terms of application for that because it is, again, you're going to get a little murky um, because it's Glastonbury's need, not Portland's need, even though you benefit by fixing the Glastonbury Road, it's not Portland's road, so they would have to apply for that money if they, if they could get it. Um, those, are, those are good suggestions. But the, very road, the piece of the road that floods yes, is in Glastonbury. Right. But it's getting to Portland land. Right. right. It doesn't affect any Glastonbury houses at all. No. Right. And as I want to say, Glastonbury has been very helpful in terms of snow removal, yeah. in terms of, of emergency services when right. needed, um, but um, there's, they haven't fixed the problem. Yeah, and we'll need yeah, to look into I mean, this. It, and I have contacted Mr. Johnson, who's the town manager, and he was going to be speaking with the town council as well as to what an appropriate response and um, plan is. Right. So we'll continue okay. to work. Thank you. Thanks okay, for coming. I hope tonight. you all have a happy holiday. You too, Jody and everyone. Thank you. Smagless. S M A. S M A. All right. The next is uh, public comment. David? Susan, just want to mention that uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen's meetings now are being um, broadcast uh, HD on, uh, on YouTube. Okay, so YouTube? You to, Good. Uh, look up uh, past Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, we are now uploading uh, each, each meeting uh, up on YouTube. Thank you. Next is an update on speed enforcement, um, DUI checkpoints, and um, the anti-smoking initiatives we'll probably speak about at another meeting. I'm working on that with youth services and the library in particular. We've had some difficulties with smoking in the vicinity, and so we'll, we'll be talking about that. Not in the building, on the grounds. But in, as far as speed enforcement um, and DUI, Lieutenant, did you want to? Tell us what you've been doing in this regard. As everybody knows, uh, in the last few months, uh, we've had three serious fatal motor vehicle accidents. We're not alone. East Hampton, the town of Marlboro, have also uh, had uh, fatal motor vehicle accidents within the last couple of months. Uh, what we've done in Portland last week, uh, myself, Susan, Scott Cunningham, uh, the selectman from the town of Marlboro, the police chief from the uh, town of East Hampton, and the town manager from the town of East Hampton, and the resident state trooper from Marlboro sat down in East Hampton to come up with some ideas on what we could do to um, make our roads a little bit more safer. Um, the town of Portland, of course, was the first town to start receiving the um, fatal motor vehicle accident so what we did in portland uh, we started stepping up our enforcement as far as radar out on route 66 we as you heard uh, got in contact with christy uh, carpino and uh, asked for some signage and more lighting out into the uh, uh, ledges what they call route 66 um, what we are doing in um, december the town uh, police department is hosting, uh, having a DWI spot check. It's gonna be uh, out on Route 66. It's gonna run from eight o'clock at night till roughly two o'clock in the morning. Um, it's something that we do around the holidays anyway, but you know, we're gonna, um, we didn't do one last year, but we're gonna um, do one this year. Um, we've come up with some ideas at the meeting. Uh, we talked about uh, getting other towns involved with Hebron and, and Colchester. Um, we're going to do some uh, publicity um, where we're going to have joint efforts uh, as far as uh, radar enforcement, getting East Hampton, because of course 
people coming into Portland are going to be coming either from East Hampton, the Marlboro area, Middletown area. They're going to be coming through our town. And like Christy said, it's not just Portland people that will be running through uh, Route 66, but it's other uh, people. So we're going to um, see if we can do some joint enforcement. They talked about bringing uh, in uh, a trailer for processing of DWIs, uh, having that in the town of East Hampton. So it's uh, locally uh, centered between Portland, East Hampton, and Marlboro. So those are the things that we started uh, out on. I know one of our fatals was out on Rose Hill Road. Um, we've uh, been concentrating on that, um, running radar um, out there. I know um, Sergeant Kelly has informed me that his midnight shift is out there in the morning, slowing traffic down. Um, we're out there, I know, on our evening shift um, doing the same. Um, and uh, that's really about what we've been doing around town. Not only are we doing um, motor vehicle enforcement as far as um, speeding, but we're also looking at the other things that cause accidents, the following too closes, the improper lane changes, the stop signs, the uh, traffic lights. Uh, so it's not just motor vehicle um, um, radar. We've also asked our officers to spend more time out on the road. Uh, we have uh, computers in our car, so they've been instructed to uh, do all their reporting, uh, writing out on, on the road uh, for visibility purposes, um, having a car sitting on Route 66 just for visibility while they're uh, typing up their reports or Main Street or uh, side streets. Um, Unfortunately, those aren't the only streets in town that the residents have been asking for uh, um, speed to slow down. Um, we have other concerns in town, uh, streets that been, uh, we've been asked to uh, run radar on, Bartlett Street, William Street, High Street. These are uh, other you know, streets that we've been getting uh, phone calls from. So the guys are doing everything they can to uh, juggle enforcement between uh, their uh, regular duties. So those are the things that are happening, at least in Portland. I know there's uh, a meeting coming up in the near future, uh, and I don't know if anyone's gotten a date together uh, to sit back down with uh, three towns, four towns, and uh, come up with some dates on when we'll be doing the joint enforcement. Any questions? Thank you. Um, I did go to, I told the selectman that today I was going to be attending, it's the Connecticut Transportation Institute. And this is an institute that is sponsored and, and housed at the University of Connecticut. And they run a variety of workshops, particularly for public works officials as well as legal traffic authorities. And they have workshops and programs for training and so forth. So um, it was a very well run seminar. It was uh, run by a um, professor from University of Massachusetts, uh, Michael Nodler, and he talked quite a bit about um, the different kinds of roads, local versus collector roads um, versus state roads, you know, the big roads that uh, get us where we want to go. And they said that um, in addition to certainly the, um, the speed on the road, it's also the roadway design. Um, that's why we want to have the state look again at the road. Um, it's something that the town needs to do as well in terms of its roads, its local roads. Um, signage is sometimes too much and it should be effective signage. So um, I'm going to be asking our 
employees to once again go out and take a look at speed limit signs, make sure speed limit signs are properly placed, um, as well as some of the other um, warning signs that we have. And as Representative Carpino pointed out, she's also, along with me, asking the state of Connecticut to review the signs that are there. Not that you necessarily need more, but you need to have the ones that are supposed to be there, there, and readable. Um, and I think we've all noticed on occasion they get old or they lose their reflectivity, and those are things that are important to look at. Um, they also talked about speed studies. Um, that's something that the state of Connecticut does, and they will take a look particularly at um, Route 66 or 17A or 17. They take a look at the traffic, and they look at how fast the traffic is going. And this professor pointed out that they reach a number of at least 100 cars, probably more than that, that are what they call free flowing. They're not in a queue, they're not in traffic, but it's rather at the time of the day when they're able to actually free flow on a road. And they, they look at the 85th percentile, and that is 85% of the vehicle's speed and, and below. They go at a speed and below, and what that number is, and then they match that up to the speed limits. Um, he had done this study in Math Natick, Massachusetts, and what they found was that they actually needed to increase the speed limit by five miles. And what they did was a tremendous education to the public to tell them that they were doing the speed study and that once they established what the proper limit should be for this particular road, they would post it, um, inform everyone, and then when they enforced the speed limit, it would be not five or 10 miles higher, but only a couple of miles higher. And they did an extreme amount of enforcement on that particular road. And what they showed by the monitoring of the speeds was cars had been going faster when they were doing the study, many cars, and then when they did the enforcement, it came down, and then after, subsequent to the enforcement period of time, it had actually monitored and they had kept to the speed. I mean, this fellow was saying that people typically will go the limit that they feel is safe on a particular road. Now, there's other circumstances besides just transit on a road. There's pedestrians, there's people that are trying to cross a road, there may be activities on the road, on the side of the road, bicycling, and so forth. So he talked a little bit about traffic calming measures that can occur, um, talked a little bit about speed bumps, I know Mr. Cabral had talked about that. Um, speed bumps, you know, they're pluses and minuses for those, uh, particularly for public safety. They don't fire trucks and so forth, they don't like um, speed bumps. They can be very much a hindrance um, to snow plows and so forth, but those are some ways of traffic calming. They talked about <coughs> painting on the road. Some roads have these chevrons that are painted on the road itself that will just visually slow down traffic. And um, they even said plantings along the side of a road, low plantings can calm traffic so they don't go as fast. Um, there was many, many other resources that were talked about, some of which um, uh, residents have brought to my attention and some new ones as well. Um, what I'm going to be doing is meeting with the two departments that they pointed out, that we know, are very important, that's Public Works and the Police Department. And those two departments work together well and they need to continue to work together well to make sure our roads are safe as they can be as well as the enforcement of the rules and the laws. Um, they talked about the three E's, um, education, engineering of the road, and enforcement. And those are the elements that are so important. Um, they also talked about, uh, actually Chief Salvatore from Cromwell was there, and he has been very successful in getting grants for additional dollars to provide the enforcement part of traffic control, speed control. And I'm gonna be getting in touch with him to see um, how those grants are applied for. 
and also continuing to work with East Hampton and Marlboro in particular because we share 66 um, and that is a dangerous road. It's proven to be um, a difficult road for many of our drivers and I think if we approach this regionally, we should have a better effect um, because we all travel these roads together. And I'll continue to update the selectmen and I appreciate all the work that um, Ms. Smith and Mr. Cabral have done in terms of bringing to our attention uh, factors and um, we'll continue to work on this. Any questions or additions? I just, just, I was just thinking uh, that historically Route 66 has, has had a large number of accidents. I was just thinking back, I had a friend of mine who was killed and it was, uh, it was several years ago, not locally, but I was on Route 66. And on over the years in town we've had, as we know, a series of accidents. So the, the regional approach of having more, um, you know, more towns involved and, and make it more of a regional um, approach, I think is good. And uh, the other thing was, uh, you know, regarding um, regarding the uh, uh, grants uh, that I was just looking at and made a note of, one is the National Highway and Traffic uh, Safety Administration, which is federal, and that's where that 200,000 that Bristol came uh, mm -hmm. uh, received and that would be for a variety of things not just for speeding but it would also get into some other areas of public uh, public safety so uh, yeah that's um, I, I think um, looking at it uh, the, the looking at it regionally is a great idea I think uh, I think uh, that, that's going to be a big help and I think that our DUI checkpoints. So I want to thank our police department for continuing to do that, um, and that will be done regionally as well. Not all on the same night, but throughout the next several weeks, we'll be announcing when that will be in Portland, and the other towns will be announcing that as well. And we'll also, uh, Sergeant Cunningham, make contact with uh, the uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, right. and uh, they're uh, going to come out tonight. We uh, have our DWI spot check. To, uh, give out pamphlets, educate the drivers, and give out the red ribbons. Uh, so that'll Excellent. be happening in December. Thank you, Sergeant. That's great. Um, and I had contacted Bob Shea. He was unable to be here tonight. But one thing that he said to me emphatically is that so many times when they're responding to accidents, that um, substance abuse or driving under the influence has <coughs> been a factor, uh, and how important it is to remind everyone to not to drink and drive. It's so important. And not to text and drive. I was just going to say, can you yes. please add text? Yes, yeah. absolutely. That is just beyond insane. Beyond insane that people text and drive. And even walkers um, that are texting while they're walking can be very dangerous. Um, and another thing they pointed, this workshop had a lot of little <coughs> facts because there were people from all over Connecticut there. It was mostly public works and police officials and a few um, town officials. And they said, in some cases, people, believe it or not, they go out and they paint their own crosswalks on the road near their house and on the road itself. And they said that can be so dangerous because people think there's a false sense of security by crossing in this crosswalk that isn't designed to be a proper crosswalk. Um, so. Just as we warn our drivers to be careful, there's many, many people, um, myself included, that do a lot of walking, and you have to remember to, to follow the rules when you're walking as well, because uh, it's also important to, to be careful. Any other comments? We'll continue to give you reports. I want to thank everyone for their help. Uh, this doesn't end. This has to be constant and consistent and worked um, together and that we can accomplish a lot. Is there anything else? Not tonight, there'll be more. The next item on the agenda is a, um, it says solar project, but it's actually an energy efficiency project. And uh, Andy Bauer is here to present the information to us. 
Good evening, Andy. Andy's the chairman of our Clean Energy Task Force. Hello, everybody. You missed the fact that we were recently awarded a $5,000 Bright Ideas grant that Kathy accepted today for us in Richards. Yeah, go ahead. go. Yeah, that, uh, that's always nice. Um, all right, so, because uh, I think differently about these things, let, let me start with an analogy. You wake up in the morning, and let's pretend you're in a house without mirrors. All right, so you can't tell how really you look. Uh, are, are your, are, is, your, is your shirt untucked? Uh, do you have something in your teeth? Is, how's your hair look? You know, your earrings, does your tie match? You know, Brian, I'm sure all the time. But, uh, you know, sho uh, socks the same color. <laughs> so um, the, a mirror gives us information ab about our appearance, and we act upon that. So um, with the solar imaging program, uh, I'm assuming everybody got uh, a copy of the uh, RFP. And I if, believe it's in their packets, and okay. I believe I emailed it All to right. them as well. So let's, let's uh, if, if I could bother you to find that packet and go to the last page where you will find this. Okay, so this is a picture of a house which has been thermal, thermally color. imaged. Okay, so you got that. All right. Oh, you got it in color too. Perfect. All right. So this gives you information about your house, and it's extremely valuable information. Uh, information which is not readily available. You know, when you look at a house, even a house that is well maintained, it's painted, it's got new windows, the roof's in good condition. However, that doesn't really tell you about how well um, the house might be insulated or if the spaces around the windows have gaps and you might be losing heat and therefore energy. So a thermal imaging uh, done on someone's residence is extremely valuable. Um, what we uh, what we're looking to um, kind of throw our hat into the ring in terms of Portland and uh, Cefia, the Clean Energy Finance and Investment Authority, is they're looking to select three to five towns who are willing to help market this program to the community. Now, the way it would work, and again, I'm gonna. I'm going to shift to the frequently asked questions. Uh, I got most of this from Cephia, but I threw in a couple things which I thought would be helpful. So I'm going to speak to this. If you've got it in front of you, you can follow along, but I'll, uh, I'll just kind of give you an overview. Um, Sagewell is the name of the company that does the thermal imaging program. They have a vehicle. It's especially equipped with a thermal imaging camera. They will go through Portland streets and essentially take a thermal image of everybody's house who qualifies. By qualifying, what I mean is you have to be within 70 feet or, or else the camera won't, won't register enough details. Um, you can't have blockages between your house and the street. The folks are not going to come onto anybody's yard. They just basically drive by the street, take a picture, go to the next house, take a picture, so forth and so on. They'll do this for the entire town of Portland anybody's house who is eligible, okay? It's not going to cost anybody a thing to do this. It won't cost the town a thing to, to have this done. We, uh, <clears throat> myself and the, and the task force, we will work with Sagewell to promote and advertise this program. Then anybody who's interested, once people know that this has been done in Portland, uh, you can go to the Sagewell website and um, you know, identify yourself as the homeowner, and they have ways of ensuring that you are, in fact, the homeowner, um, and request the picture that you guys have in front of you. If that picture is enough to motivate the homeowner to do something about potential heat loss for their home, then the next step is for the person to then call and say, hey, listen, I'd, I'd like an energy assessment. I want somebody to come to my house. And the people will come to the house and uh, say, OK, this is what we're seeing by the report. Um, this is what we're seeing by being here at your house. Here are some things that you might want to do to address the situation. Might be insulation, might be new windows, might be uh, uh, this, that, or the other thing. Um, and at that point, at any point, the uh, the resident can, the homeowner can say, uh, "I want to go forward and do something," or "That's okay, thanks, but no thanks." And then still, there's no cost to the homeowner. Um, 
that's that's essentially it in, in, a, in a nutshell. Uh, in, in one of these documents that I have indicated that between 5 and 18 percent of a given town, the, the residents has signed up uh, and, and chose to have uh, energy efficiency measures uh, applied to their house. Um, on average, just to give you some context, um, because the Clean Energy Task Force has been doing this for a number of years, this being home energy solutions and promoting insulation and stuff like that. For people who have subscribed to the programs that the State of Connecticut offers, and that's basically what we promote, the CEFIA programs, the Efficiency Fund programs, those folks have saved over $1,000 per year. So you're, you think of it this way, you, know, you, you spend two, two grand on insulation, you save $1,000 each year, each year, each year. So the savings tend to build up. Um, that's a, you know, a, a, an off-the-cuff example. Not everybody has the same results, but uh, the idea is obviously you make your house more weathertight, you're going to save money. So um, what we need to do uh, in order for us to uh, officially throw our hat in the ring is um, um, I have a just a, a, a one-page quick application and I would um, the application requires uh, Susan as the head of our town to sign off on that um, and then uh, the next step is for uh, myself and the task force to engage with Sagewell and come up with a plan for marketing um, should we get accepted uh, you know I don't know how many people are um, how many other towns are, are also going to be applying um, but I thought it would be a great thing for our residents um, I, you know, there's more details to it, but I think, I've, again, this is an overview, so I'd be happy to stop here and if there's any questions. Oh, last thing, this, the timeline is somewhat tight, and I apologize for this. This came across my desk the week before Thanksgiving. Um, if we choose to go forward, I, I, again, I'm putting you on the spot, but the decision needs to be made tonight in order to meet the Friday deadline. So um, that's, that's where we're at right now. Questions. questions? I think it's Are there any privacy issues associated with this sort of technology? Um, well, um, that's that's a good question, and, and let me let me give you probably more of an answer than you're asking for. But hopefully, it'll it'll cover everybody's privacy concerns because privacy is a concern. Um, Sagewell is um, if 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 we get selected, Sagewell is asking, can you put your publicly available data, um, assessor maps, um, you know, addresses, can you, can you put that in one nice, neat package for us? Now, <clears throat> keep in mind that they're going to be driving a specially equipped vehicle and they're going to be taking 2,500 thermal images. So the cost is to them is rather substantial. So they're asking, can you give us this information so, number one, when we go and we take these pictures, we know that we're at Brian Flood's house or at Andy Bauer's house and we're taking the picture of Andy Bauer's house so that when I go into the website, I make sure I get my information and not Susan's, okay? So um, the, there's no greater privacy risk to residents of Portland other than what would normally be available through um, other means. And uh, somewhere in these documents, they make the, um, um, you know, they, they, they make the analogy of Google Maps. You guys have seen the street view for Google Maps. Well, Google Maps takes a card pretty much like the thermal imager, and it goes and it takes a 360 panoramic view. Um, you know, that's publicly available. Uh, realtors will go and they'll take pictures of your house because, you know, it's okay, it's public data. When they're trying to um, get a feel for a neighborhood, they go and do this. We as a town, we, we take this data. We take pictures of houses. You know, we do other data on people. So Sagewell is not asking the town to reveal any data past what is publicly available. and. Um, so if that answers your question. Does this type of imaging pick up people, though? You know, I mean, there's thermal imaging type equipment that does. Um, 
Uh, that's out of my area of expertise. I'm going to say no, but that's just, uh, you're looking at the picture that you see there. Um, the picture, and, and again, I'll just refer to that, um, but you're looking at where your house leaks. Um, I don't know if you could, judging from the resolution of the picture that you have in front of you, if you could make out any type of personal features, like just going to the extreme, which is, I, I think, where you might be asking if someone was, was in a witness protection program. If you look at this picture here, I, I would say there's no way you're going to see any features which would be recognizable. Have you looked at the Google maps? Sure. The street maps? Although this seems to be different technology than that. It but, is. But what I wanted to say is when, when there's a person that's captured in the, in the <coughs> photo, they fuzz the person. You can't tell who the person is. Okay, but depending, I, I mean, I'm... There was the a ones thing I looked at. at. There was a thing on, online with a grandmother who had passed away, and she's still on Google Maps waiting to the camera. Oh. So she's not fuzzed no, up? No, she's still fuzzed up. The ones I looked at were close. Maybe, maybe my computer this, this is This seems like there's a possibility that this is much more invasive <laughs> than, than Google Maps and take a picture. And maybe I'm wrong about the science. But that's what I'm asking, I guess. Yeah, um, and I, I guess my, my response would be uh, Google Maps, you have pretty much a high definition, high quality picture. I don't, I've it's been on it a couple of times. Um, and I guess you know, contrast that to what you have on the piece of paper in front of you. So uh, I, I would offer that as a, a method for... Well, maybe nobody's home. Um, it could be. Um, I do know that, uh, um, you know, they're looking to do this um, at the best time of the year, which would be the cold winter months, because that's when you're going to see leakage. Um, you know, so I'm assuming they would be doing this during the day. I mean, why not? The thermal imager doesn't care whether it's night or day. Um, you know. Uh, well, if people aren't at home during the day, though, won't most people's heat be off? Would, wouldn't you have a hard time uh, capturing leakage? You, you, um, that you, you still are going to be able to pick up the leakage okay. that you know, because houses mm -hmm. leak all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I suppose it would be better if they came by at three in the morning, but you know, okay. you got people a lot of money to do that you know so what's the pro I just am curious um, is everyone automatically signed up for this and if you don't want it you opt out um, good question uh, no one is signed up for it so the images will be taken and then you have to sign up in order to view your images okay. And uh, I spoke with a gentleman at Sagewell because I was asking ab about privacy as well. And he said, um, and this response makes sense, he says, I don't want to tell you everything we do to keep um, people's, to make sure that Andy gets Andy's report because to do so would reveal what they do and then people could game the system. Um, he says, but they take every precaution to make sure that Andy only gets Andy's report and not the other way around. Um, you know, I, I, the way I looked at it, because I, I had, I think, the same hesitations that, that you, you folks might be having, which is, you know, wh what would be the worst that would happen? Someone would see a blurry image of my house that shows heat loss, and that's it. So, um, but, but anyone can go by a house and take a picture. Right. As long as you're not on private property. Well, maybe you can explain the science to me a little bit. What, what is thermal imaging? I, I, I don't have the impression that it's a picture. Okay. I, 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 Did you ever see the movie? It's different and that law enforcement uses right, right, right. different reasons to see what's going on inside someone's home. Right. right. Yeah. And whether there are people there and what they're doing and that sort of thing. So yeah. That's what I'm asking. What, what, what is this technology? And, different or is it the same as it, it's pretty much the same if, if I'm not sure if Portland Fire Department has these but I know fire departments do employ them okay. and but they're going to only use them in limited circumstances exactly but you're asking about technology so yeah. this um, whereas a regular camera camera takes you know shades of color of how we look this is taking shades of degrees so but it has the potential to see someone inside their house right not that I know of. Okay. 
that, that's what I mean. It shows, doesn't it show sort of a, 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 a sort of the frame of a person potentially? Depending. I mean, what what is the what is the fire department or the police? What is that? What they're identifying? Well, they would be identifying for a, a fire department. I'm going to assume if the heat or something. Yeah, yeah. you know how um, fires can move into walls and there can be yeah. hot spots, so the guys go and do what they have to do and then they leave, and there's still 500 degree whatever inside the wall. You take a thermal image, you spot that. Sure. So, my understanding is that certain law police departments could use that as well. I'm just wondering if it's similar yeah. technology, like how deep into this it is. Yeah, um, I, 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 I can't honestly. I mean, if it's simply you take, you know, you take a thermal image and it's, you know, shows different colors and this is, you know, major heat right. loss versus whatever. That's one thing. Right. I would agree with it. It's not a big deal. I'm just asking. Yeah, um, I don't know the answer. I would suspect not. Well, it doesn't I mean, see through walls, though, does it? I mean, it just sees no. the heat, you know? It sees where heat is located. Um, if you were standing in front of a window, it would see your heat signature, you know? But uh, I don't think it would, you know, see you on, you know? Well, that's what I'm asking. I don't know if it's sensing a, a, a heat, the heat from a person, then that probably would sense it through the walls. No, I don't think it's designed like that. It, I mean, it, it, it only it detects leakage. So your leakage, um, okay. If you go to if you go to work early and you look at people's roofs, and then you look at what's where the bathroom is, and there's usually the vent pipe that comes from the bathroom, and sometimes you can see one long row of rafters, which is like it's all melted, and that is a poorly insulated roof. Okay, so. You can tell that by looking at it. The camera, the thermal imaging camera, can can look at stuff like around your windows, uh, or uh, your eaves, or your fascia, or your doors, uh, and can check out leaks that away. So, um, the only thing I, I can I can offer to you if, you, if you feel, I mean, your comfort level obviously is your comfort level. And just to be honest, I mean, if you're, if you're comfortable with this, that's fine. If you're not comfortable, that's, that's fine. Um, you know, I don't know, like I said, I don't know how many people have um, applied for this. Uh, they did extend the deadline once already, um, and probably because people didn't apply for whatever reason, they couldn't get, um, um, you know, all their ducks in a row to, to apply. Um, it's a possibility to, um, for me to go to Cephia and, and just, and just say, hey, listen, you know, um, any chance you could give us another couple weeks? I mean, Brian, if there's questions that, that you have that I can, you know, go back to Sagewell and just say, hey, listen, can you, is this camera, is this capable of of taking anyway a realistic picture of a person, you know, I can ask them that, and I can tell you what they respond. We may miss the boat in terms of the deadline, uh, um, but you know, again, um, you know, you, as I said, your comfort level is your comfort level, and if you've got those questions, other people in town might have the same thing. I, I you know, I, I'll go on record. I don't, I don't think this is as invasive as. Um, I just don't think it's as it's it's any more invasive than what's already out there, um, you know. So I, I feel comfortable. With it. I'd actually love to have this happen on, on my house, you know. And you guys probably know how much work I've done on my house. But one thing I've learned about energy efficiency is you always keep looking for like you know, because I've replaced a door. So how well is that door sealed? I'd love to find that out. I think I'm, I'm for this. I don't see a problem as far as privacy goes, too. You know, as long as, you know, the pictures are already kept private. Um, and if, you know, if we do have, if anything comes up, I'm sure, you know, we can go from there. But, you know, if there's a deadline and uh, this seems like a win-win for the town, I, I really don't see uh, any anything wrong with it. We can always reject if you're selected. Yeah, you don't you don't have to go on and you know you, you can, can only you can only see your on. your your image if you actively sign up through the website and request that, and then they'll send you a password and then you can go on and see your image. I, just a couple of 
couple of quick thoughts here. Sure. What the history of, the, of, of this, I, you know, how long is the company? Is it a local company, national company? I mean, is it, is it um, I, I don't know uh, much about Sagewell's, uh, like, like how long they've been in business. I can tell you that the home energy um, improvement field, if you will, um, is relatively young. There are some companies that have been doing it for like 10 years, but the home energy solutions uh, industry, uh, I know several of you have enjoyed those. Um, let me put it this way, back like 10 years ago, there were maybe four outfits in Connecticut who did this, and now I think there are over 80, um, just because more and more people are getting clued into um, energy efficiency. Something I said. <laughs> so, so there's a history, in other words, yeah. there's a history somewhere around uh, Jonestown, or Jonestown. I, I, they've done this. And, yeah, are you familiar with that. Or? I, I do. I do know that uh, Cephia, in the Cephia documentation that I received, Sagewell um, had done this in 40 towns across New England. Um, there were some towns uh, that they're doing in Connecticut. Um, you know, I, I reached out to some of those towns. Unfortunately, um, I didn't hear back. And I basically said, you know, what can you tell me? Anything good? Anything bad? Um, unfortunately, I'd, I hadn't heard back from those, um, you know, at this time. Again, things were a little bit rushed. And, and I assume the other thought I had was I assumed that there would be, uh, someone would be responsible for some publicity so that when the vehicles are driving around town, the police department doesn't start getting calls and, hey, what's happening? Is right. You know, the, who, the, I think the town uh, it might do something, but it would seem to me that there would be more to be um, an effort to make sure people are aware. Um, right, and Fred, that's, I mean, you're looking at them. You know, me and the task force, that's what we do. We, you know, we. So you take care of that. Yeah, I'm going to call my, my good friend Jeff, who's always ready to take my phone calls. He, he will listen you know, to you. Right? And he'll, and so, yeah, we'll send out press release and we'll try to, you know, we'll ask certainly the River East, you know, for as much coverage as they choose to give us because, you know, we are, uh, the task force, in essence, we are, um, we're, we're, we're a public education outfit. You know, we've never um, said, okay, you have to do this. It's always, hey, here's what's out there. If you want to take advantage of it, then that's great. You know, and we have a bunch of people who, um, uh, you know, who can talk about their own experiences. But, so yeah, we're, we, this, this, I mean, if we don't promote it, no one's gonna know. And right, yeah. so our whole well, thing. Well, no, will be the police department. I don't be getting calls or, you know, because. Oh, we, sure, you know, that's a great idea. You know, all right. No, you're going. I'm comfortable knowing that you take care of that aspect. Yeah. Thanks. And I, th I was saying to Andy, this is in keeping with our energy policy that we passed a few years ago, in terms of bringing more energy efficiency programs and promotion of, of energy efficiency in our community. So I want to thank the Clean Energy Task Force for bringing this to us. You're I'm, I'm fine with it. Can you just tell me? What, yeah. what do you know about Sage? Well, what, what businesses are um, I, um, they, they are a, a home improvement company. They specialize in energy efficiency. Um, you know, they've done other towns in, in New England. Um, I would imagine, uh, and this is sort of a, a I'm, I'm kind of guessing here a little bit, Brian, but in order to, to have the resources to do thermal imaging for an entire town, they have to be well established, you know. Um, and um, so there's that whole component. Um, and the other thing, to be quite honest, I, I do have, um, I'm a big fan of Cephia and have been for a long, long time. Um, they do their homework, they work hard, and, um, you know, they have programs which are really good. Um, Cephia um, watches over the people who are implementing their programs. So like for example, solar installers. You can't screw up as a solar installer if you're, if you're being recommended by Cephia because they take you off your list and nobody wants to be taken off the list. 
So the fact that Cephia is promoting this program and has said Sagewell is the company that can do it, I put a lot of stock on that. And what information are they obtaining? Is the town providing them with information about their To Sagewell? Yeah. Okay. Um, Sagewell, let me put it this way. Sagewell could go through the phone book and get your name, number, and address. Okay. okay. Then they could go through uh, tax assessor records and get similar information and then there's a couple other avenues. What Sagewell is asking um, and uh, is, is to like, hey Portland, if we're gonna bring in this thermal imaging, can you give us the information about addresses and contact information or whatever so we can verify, like again, when you call up, is it gonna be Brian's house or is it gonna be somebody else? Can you give us this package, you know, and nice and neat, and that's gonna make our job easier to make sure two things, I'll call it front end and back end. The front end is they want to be able to make sure to verify that they're at the right house taking the right image for the right person. And then when that person calls in, they want to verify, yeah, are you who you say you are? Because we're going to send you this image. So we want to make sure that you're who you say you are. And then once that's verified, what are they going to do? Um, notice that there's a problem. Okay, so, um, so I, I, I go to the website and I say, I want my thermal image, okay? So they check out who I am, okay? You know, who I say I am, all right? And then they send me a password, okay? I go back to the website a couple days later, and m that picture and with some other information is on the website, okay? So I say, whoa, I've got some leaks around wherever. I want the next step. The next step would be to um, get in touch with Sagewell and say, um, you know, can you send somebody over? Just like you had the HES done, similar to that. So, so, so they'd send a, a, you know, a, a rep over and, and they would sit down with you and go over the thermal imaging report and probably do some on-site inspection as well. I, I don't know, I'm just guessing. I would think they would do that. And, um, you know, if you want to go forward, um, if you're a house that had a home energy solutions done a long time ago or never had one done, they'd say, first step, Spend a hundred bucks, get the home energy solutions. Okay, and I think those of us, you know, a lot of us know how good a deal that was. Once you get the home energy solutions, okay, it says, hey, you could deal with new installation, you could do with windows, you could do this, that, and the other thing. Do you want to go forward? At any point in that chain that I just outlined, if the resident says, I'm really not interested, thanks, but no thanks, then the whole process stops. So, so what I'm sort of getting at is this then turning into a marketing this in charge of this and that, I mean. Essentially, yeah, 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 I, 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 yeah, I guess, you know, and that's, to, to be honest, that's what the task force has been doing, you know, for years, you know, um, you know, we were saying, why not go solar, you know, why not reduce your emissions, why not reduce your, your energy bill, when you do an HES, why not reduce your emissions, why not reduce your energy bill, so, um, the, the difference with the task force is, you know, we, we are not directly involved, even indirect, we're not indirectly or directly involved with getting any finances, you know, um, so. Although we're sort of facilitating the business for, for stage well, I suppose. Um, that's, that's, yeah, I, I, I suppose. Um, if there was a competing bid for another thermal imaging outfit, I suppose we could look at it, but um, right now I, I don't know if anybody who's offering this. I, I know people uh, around town, you know, myself included, have been saying, "Geez, you know, would it be possible to get a thermal image of my house?" And I've been—I was interested in this five years ago. The fact that Sage Well is is going to come and do this for free—that's big, okay. And then the other thing is, you could—and this is—I—if—if if anybody was like really, you know, they. I don't want to use the, the term skeptical, but just a smart shopper. I would say invite Sagewell in, let them do what they're going to do. When they say you need insula insulation, get their quote, and then call Lantern Energy, get a quote from them. Call Next Step Living, get a quote from them. If it was, I, you know, if I was advising someone, I would say, listen, if all the quotes are reasonably close, you know, and maybe Sagewell is a little higher, give it to Sagewell because they did all this work for you. But, you know, I've always recommended, even when, when people were, we were doing solarize and people were looking uh, for real good solar to, to give them a quote, I've always said, if you, you know, if you don't think Real Goods is giving you a good deal, call two other companies, get three quotes. You know, and that's been kind of a standard operating policy for us for a while. 
So they then have the thermal imaging. Yeah. The town has provided that information to people. What's to prevent them from calling each person saying, I can do this, I can do that, we can help this and sell this product to the other product and, and harass people? Um, I, uh, let me just check, okay, because I, I, okay. Um, typical process for a homeowner, and this is from the RFP, sign up at Sagewell, you get a call, you receive an email from Sagewell within 48 hours. Within a few days, you get a call from Energy, Energized Connecticut approved contractor, you know, like somebody that Sagewell is contracted with. And again, any, any Energized Connecticut approved contractor are people who, you know, again, I put a lot of stock on the Energy Efficiency Fund for their approved list. So it could be Lantern, it could be Next Step Living. Contractor conducts the assessment, offers recommendations. So, I mean. I understand somebody calls, but I'm right. asking, so now they're provided with this information. Yeah. And I don't call them. Yeah. How do I know that? You know, they won't call you? Be, yeah. Somebody gets your cell phone, they sell somewhere else, they go down that road, et cetera, et cetera, just sort of facilitating that process. And what I'm trying to find out is whether that's going to happen, which I imagine is going to happen, yeah. or whether there's some sort of um, I, I can't answer that. I, I, I just don't know. I mean, if I was running this through Cephia and I did cold call and started annoying people, I'm not sure if Cephia is going to ask me back. But I, I don't know, Brian. I just, I just don't know. People can call you. Now. It's, yeah, it's, it's there now. But you're making it easier, sort of facilitate. I mean, I agree with. I mean, it's probably okay. a good yeah. thing, but I'm. Well, I do I, think you that... Know, to me, most people who do something are, in most cases, are doing it to make money. And well, yeah, here's and Sephia is promoting and energy efficiency. And yeah. they're doing it through a variety of methods. Their methodology does tend to be these promotions of try this. This might be the Home Energy Solutions Program might be for you. So sign up, and in some cases, there's been Pardon. promotions where you don't have to pay for it. The rebate comes to the town. So let me, let me just ask out, this. Why, why is the town involved then, I guess? So, so, so why can't Sagewell just go out and do this themselves and market the it to each right? individual they, person they need, as opposed to the they town? Want, they want us to information. make it easier by giving them the information on where we're going and which residences. I mean, is that the function of the town? To, I, I don't know, to, to, to give that information out to people so some company can sell more products to them. I, I, I don't know. That seems a lot to me. Well, I, I would say that uh, a function of the town is to set policy, I guess, and in this way we're, we're offering a service that would otherwise be not readily available to residents. Um, and, Anyone and can get the information if they ask for it. The assessor's data is already online, number one. The GI uh, so if that's true, why aren't they just doing that? Need to be, many towns have it available online. We don't, but we can make it. Oh, I'm sorry? Yeah, we do not. But many towns do. Um, we don't because we just haven't gotten to that point yet. But it's all purchased and all available with public funds. I think it also has to do with, you know, this company it probably, what you said, has uh, limited towns that they're going to be doing this with. And they probably want to, I mean, if I were going to sell uh, equipment, I would want to sell it to a town who was willing to, you know, uh, help with that. You know what I mean? I would sure you would, but why is the town facilitating that? Because we have nothing to lose from it. I mean, it's a good thing for our residents. You upset, it, well, you're making that decision. I, I don't know that it is because I don't know who Sagewell is. Well, I mean, I could right now buy a thermal camera and go take pictures of your house from the street. I mean, you could. it's... So I, I don't understand what um, what the because because it, it, I, I just don't money. know the answer. But it sounds like they're in it to make money, and then they're going to be calling people. I don't know how people feel about sales calls and that happening. Kevin, the time. did you and want to make a your ability to, to prevent <coughs> that? I mean, you can go on a no list, and it doesn't. It seems to me that the town is facilitating that, and that, that's that's my problem. Kevin, now maybe I'm misunderstanding, but is safe to assume that we're only providing them with so much information and then the homeowner themselves has to go in and sign up and then 
possibly provide additional information? Because we're, we're not giving them a list of phone numbers or email addresses. I, I think what they have to do there is, to, again, they're, they're only going to grab the information which is, is public. And uh, again, back to that front end, back end analogy, their interest on the front end is just making sure they're at the right place, taking the picture of a house, of Andy Bauer's house. So at the back end, um, that I think is where um, it's in, you know, it's Sagewell has to, that's where the, the data that we give them is part of it. But I think I'm just guessing here that they have other ways of, um, you know, are, they're going to require other methods of verifying who you are so that they will release the picture, you know, and be reasonably certain that the right person is getting it. So once somebody signs up at Sagewell, I think at that point you're going to be required to put some more information into the process. What data is the town of Portland providing to them? Um, let's see, we could find. Yeah, I don't want to give out phone numbers. No, we, don't, we don't have people's phone numbers. Some of the voter lists that you get um, may have phone numbers on it. Those are already available. Whether or not they're correct, I don't know. Tom? The main thing, based on the requests that we receive, that you know that you can't normally access, which is like our GS sheet files. The, a week after the thing is, they would get a phone call from them. Now, where would they? Yeah, the I'm trying to find the list of stuff here, Dave, and um, I, I, I can't find it easily, but I have a feeling it's kind of like what Tom was saying. Um, the initial front end picture is just like, are we at the right place? Do we have the physical characteristics of the house? Right. Good. Okay, so that's at 256 Old Marble Turnpike, my address. Okay. When I go into the website, that's when I give them my phone number. And that's when I give them my right. email address right. uh, because I want to go that. forward. But uh, I just think we're, we're just providing Sagewell with the uh, ability to be accurate in their report. Okay. And um, then when, we, when I, as an individual, go onto the site, um, I can voluntarily give over more information. But how are people going to know that this information is available? Well, see, that's to Fred's question earlier. That's, you know, we, we want to promote this. You know, uh, we want to make people, because if we don't promote it, then very few people are going to know. So we want, I mean, it'd be great if 3,000 homes in Portland say, yeah, I want to see my thermal imaging data. Andy, what's the actual procedure? So they, they drive by your house and yep. what happens? How long does that take? Are they parked out there? What's, what's going on? Um, I, I, I've never seen this done, Brian, but I'm just, just thinking through, you know, drive car, stop car, focus, click. All right, Charlie, let's go, you know. Um, Someone asked so. me, have you ever seen the Google car? I've not seen it. Have you seen it? Yeah, no, yeah. I see it, and it's, it's very similar. It's the same concept, basically. Well, that? What's that? How do you know that? Well, because That's it makes sense. I mean, yeah. But I mean, I just because like I'm thinking about it practically. I mean, this oh. is a business. They want to make money. They want, and the cause is good because it helps everyone. Helps you save money potentially, and it helps. Uh, it helps the environment. And so all they're doing is they're using information that's readily accessible.